Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how I created this art journal page. Today I'm working in my Dina Weekly Media blue journal on the heavy watercolor paper and I'm going to be using Color Sparks watercolor powders. These are really interesting concentrated powders that react with water and create all kinds of interesting effects. So I started off by spraying a layer of water and now I'm just shaking out these powders onto my page and letting them react with the water and move however they want to. So you can see right now they're mostly in the concentrated powder form, but as they mix and meld with each other and the water, this is going to change very quickly. I am working with the Berry Punch set, which contains the colors of Fuchsia, Merlot, and Orchid. And as I said it, I'm just sprinkling those on my page, and now I'm going over with my water bottle and adding some more water to really let those powders start to move and mix on my page. I'm going to keep misting this with water until I have most of those powders dissolved and I'm going to allow the, some time in between each spray to really let the colors move and mix together. And then I'm going to let it dry and this is the final result. Now I've decided to go over it with a layer of gesso for two different reasons. One, I felt like the background got a little bit dark and I wanted it to be much brighter for my final vision of my design. And two, I wanted to highlight the texture that this heavy watercolor paper really has. So by going over it with a light layer of gesso and my palette knife, the bumps and grooves in this paper, because it is a handmade paper, is going to really become apparent. And you can see that in the divots of the page, that where the gesso is not hitting, that original color is staying very dark. And on the raised parts of the paper, that's where the gesso is going. So it's creating really interesting texture in my background. So I'm doing this very quickly, and again, because I'm wanting there to be texture, if there's some areas that don't have 100% gesso coverage, that's okay because that is what I'm trying to do. While I'm letting that dry, I decided to get out a stamp from the Dilution Star Struck set, and I'm just shaking some powder onto my stamp and then spraying it with water, and you can see that you get some really interesting effects. Now, I'm going to do several different versions of this. I only wanted about five hearts, but after I started playing and experimenting, I was amazed with the results. So experiment with this. I did powder and then water. And then after it kind of started to dry out, I added more water to the stamp. And then after I felt like it was getting really light, I went back and added more powder and more water and just experimented with this. And you can see all the different looks you can create from just one watercolor powder and a little bit of water in a stamp. My recommendation would use a stamp that doesn't have a lot of detail in it or if the stamp gets flooded that you can still tell what it is. For example, even if the heart got 100% filled in, you could still tell it was a heart. After I've given those watercolor powders a chance to dry, I'm going to start cutting around the hearts with my Fiskar Micro Snip Scissors. As I mentioned before, I stamped way more hearts than I actually needed, but now I have a chance to go around and pick my very favorite hearts and what matches color-wise best with my project. And I'll also have several hearts stamped that I can save for a future project to use in a handmade card or another journaling page. I selected this quote from the Dress My Craft Quotes One pack. And this is a transfer that I'm going to be able to put down onto my page really simply with a sponge. So I'm going around and cutting away all the extra transfer just to make it a little bit cleaner and less for me to have to transfer later with my sponge and water. So I'm again just trimming around with my scissors. This is a clear transfer so if you don't 100% remove all the extra it will still work perfectly fine. I'm also using a Dina Wakely Media chipboard The Women and this is one of the silhouettes in that set. And now I can begin applying my transfer. So I'm going to remove the clear protective sheet and then place it face down onto my paper. All you need to do this transfer is a wet sponge and we're just going to saturate the backing of this transfer. You could use either a kitchen sponge or a makeup sponge but just once you use the sponge keep it in your craft room don't use it on other places. And after you have that backing 100% saturated it will just nicely peel right off and your transfer is in place. The last step to finish doing this transfer is to place some kind of sealer down on top of it. So you could use a gel medium, a collage medium, or in this example, I'm using clear gesso and I'm applying it with a Finnabar silicone brush, which I find is the easiest way to put medium down and keep it 100% smooth. I'm choosing clear gesso because I know that I'm going to want to write with my gel pens later and that's a good medium to use. 
And now I can begin laying out all of my elements and deciding where I want them to be placed. So I'm placing the hearts and then also lifting that silhouette and moving the hearts around as I make my decisions and visualize how everything will look. And then I'm going to lift each element up individually and place some distressed collage medium on the back of it with my finger and then place it down on my page and glue it in place. When I'm working with a lot of elements or doing collage, this is my preferred method to lay out all of my elements and decide how I want everything to look and then lift each piece individually and glue it in place. And that way I know how everything will look in the end and I don't make mistakes or run out of space. Also another tip, because I have some of the elements going off of my page, I decided to cut away the extra before I glued it down. You could do it the opposite way, which is glue it down and then trim. But in this case, I decided it was just easier to make the cut and then glue it on the page and have the edge be perfectly flat along the edge of my page and I didn't have to worry about trimming later. Now that all my hearts are glued down, I can move on to my final element, which is a Dina Wakely Media Chipboard The Women uh, Shape Silhouette. And again, I'm gluing this down with Distress Collage Medium and I'm placing this with my finger. You could also use a brush or a palette knife if you prefer. I like to just use my finger for pieces like this because it's faster and I don't have to worry about cleaning a brush. It's really easy to clean my finger with a baby wipe. So I just do this, it's fast, and that's my preferred method. But of course, you do what you feel most comfortable with. I'm making sure that I have a nice thick layer along my entire piece because this is a little bit heavier and I don't want it to lift up later. Also, because my page is a little bit textured, I want there to be enough glue to really make those two pieces stick together. If you get any glue along the side of your chipboard, you can just wipe it off with your finger. It does dry 100% clear, so it's not a problem. And now I'm placing it down on my page exactly how I want it, and I will let this dry. After everything has had plenty of time to dry, I gave it about six hours to make sure that the, all the glues were cured. I'm going over my transfer with a Secura Jelly Roll pen. This is the white pen. And I'm just on the two bigger words, highlighting it by going in between the gaps with this white pen and making that highlight really pop. You also may not have noticed that there are tiny little black hearts between all of these words. And I decided they were really cute. So I was going to add some of my own black hearts and I'm drawing these on with a Fude Ball pen in black. And I'm also going to do a little bit of a larger heart on my Silhouette Woman uh, chipboard piece. And then I'm going to leave this to dry and my page is 100% complete. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were inspired and got ideas to create in your own art journal. If so, I'd love to see them. So be sure to share with us using hashtag Art Journal Junction. If you enjoyed this video and like to see more in the future, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future art journaling videos and mixed media projects.